Hello and welcome to episode 6 of ABI Labs. In the previous episode, we looked at how we can use the MIS-4 to carry out a parametric test on an optocoupler. In this episode, we will be looking at the remaining instruments available with the MIS-4. So Oliver, what are these instruments? Okay, so the remaining instruments of the MIS-4 are our meters, because our voltmeter, ammeter, ohmmeter and frequency counter. They're all very similar and they've got some great features on them. That's great. Can you show us this in the software? Yeah, of course. So, as most of our instruments, it's easily accessible, already designed, you don't have to create it yourself. I'll open, this is our voltmeter, and as you'll see, it's very similar to the rest of our meters. Okay, so there's our frequency counter, ohm meter, and our meter. I'll just focus on the voltmeter for now. Okay. So, for this instrument, you'll see that it's got a variety of measurement modes. We have a single mode, run mode, and hold mode. That will take a variety of measurements, single one measurement, run will take continuous measurements, and hold will take a burst of measurements and average them out. Okay, different measurement types, AC, AC, DC, and DC, as well as auto range, or you can select a range of your choice. It also has automatic uh, measurement statistics that records measurements along your recording, and most importantly, our comparison would give you a pass or fail depending on if it matches the stored value. That's great and this works hand in hand with the test flow so you just set this up once and then once you've probed your test points you either get a pass or a fail. Exactly, same for the oscilloscope and if you want any more of that information you can find the link in the description below. Can you show us how the digital voltmeter works? Yes of course, it works like all our other meters. They've all got built-in comparison so in this case we've set a target of 5 volts which I'm expecting from the board as it's running already, I'll take my tolerance inside my target. Of course, I'm measuring zero volts at the moment, so I'm going to get a fail, but not until I actually measure the point I'm looking for, I'll get a pass. And I'll take a single measurement of that so I can release the probe. So what if I don't know how the system works or how I, don't, how I carry out a particular test? Are we able to document all of this? Yeah, of course. So if you're a more senior engineer and you want to pass down your knowledge to other technicians or engineers, you can add your own information. In this case, I've taken a photo of the point I just probed. I'll open that up here under Add Media, Add Image. Opens up a blank window for you to add your image. And I'll use this point here. There you go, a nice high-res photo of the point that I just measured. And that'll be saved in the test flow. So it's not only images, you can add also videos, PDF schematics and things like that? Yes, of course, so you can add a, a wide range of uh, media to make it a really rich document. So Oliver, you've shown us how we can document our test procedure, how we can add test instructions, images, how we can add PDFs, schematics, videos, and so on. Can we also save all of this data into a report? Is that possible? Yes, of course. So all while I've been doing all these tests from start to finish, it's been recording all the data in a report. So it's as simple as putting it in step mode, as you would as an engineer, like so, and taking a measurement of our point for our final test, like so, and we'll get a pass, like so. I can take that off there and look at the report. So the report's great for some traceability and compliance. It's great to hand to your customers or your managers so they can see how you've handled the situation. Here we've got a report with a reading from a particular step. Here we have episode three where we tested an octocoppler and this is all the measurements it took as well as a screen capture of the instrument. At the top, we can customize all of this, so it can say your customer's name, you can even have your logo and all the details you want. That's brilliant. So not only can we document the whole test procedure, we can also save all of this information in a report, again, to hand out to either customers or store in a database. Exactly, it gets saved as a HTML document that can be either saved, saved locally or shared on either a cloud service or any other upload. That's great. So make sure you stay tuned for next week's episode in which we will be showing how we can use the System I Ultima software, the Board Master to create custom instruments and many other features available with the software. So stay tuned for that.